the kingdom of God. Now we're talking about the people of the kingdom or the subjects of God's kingdom. What is required of them? And so he says, if any man will be my disciple, any man will come after me, let him first deny himself. That's all your you to stand with us. All right, we're going to read, again in verse 21, and read down to the end of that chapter 16. Verse uh, 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show to his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. But he turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what, what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there is some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Praise the Lord. Now we want to just uh, ask if you'll touch somebody's hand and let's agree in prayer for the remainder of the service. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your love for us. I thank you for the word of God that is truth, yes. that it comes to free us up, to heal us, to give us guidance and instruction in righteousness. We thank you, Lord God, and ask now that by your precious word, Life will come. Yes, Lord. Healing, restoration, yes. deliverance, yes. instruction in righteousness. Yes. Lord, fill this atmosphere yes. now with your presence. Yes. For we have come to worship you, yes, Lord. the only true God, and your Son, Jesus Christ. Take control now. Fill this atmosphere with your glory that we may be able to worship you yes. in, spirit in spirit and in truth. And truth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Pull down the strongholds of our minds yes. as your word is coming forth now. Yes, Lord. And we're going to give you glory for it's not by might nor by power, but it is by your spirit. In Jesus' name, we acknowledge you, we bless you, yes. we praise you, yes, we, do. we give thanks to you now. Yes. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to thank the Lord, first of all, for each and every one of you here. Many of you have been with us for quite a number of years, and um, it is our desire to see uh, God's people prosper even as the soul prosper and just recently the Lord says 
rebuild the church. And <clears throat> I can't help but believe that there are certain things that he has in mind when he talk about rebuilding. And so we've been prayerfully considering and um, meditating on what God has in mind so that we might be in accord with his will. Because what really matters on this earth is God's will, right? Amen. And so there are scriptures that seems to be hard to us. When I say hard, I mean it's not something that we read about or talk about every day. Those scriptures, uh, it seemed like there's a need to be more developed. But I thought about it as I, uh, I was thinking about that passage of scripture. And Jesus, after he had finished uh, his ministry on earth, he said to the disciples, he said, I have many things to say to you, but you're not ready to receive it yet. But what I read today was not one of those. Amen. So what that says to me is, this is very foundational for our Christian experience. And I hope that the word of God will make or uh, will minister to us in the way God intends. So, um, and I asked my wife to come and she hasn't done all the preparation that she normally does. So that was the first denial of self. <laughs> but she was willing to do it. So I was very grateful. So. Um, there's another scripture found in St. John chapter 12 I think we might as well read that while we're reading and I want to reiterate this is for me and for all of us and that is to take heed how we hear Are we all together on one plane? Mm -hmm. The Lord says, take heed how you hear. If you listen and take it to heart and respond, then God said, I'll give you more. But he says, if you basically hear it and don't hear it, then I can't give you more. So we all want to grow, right? We all want to move into the deeper things that God has for us, the more media uh, parts of the word of God. But in order to do that, we must hear the things that he says and take heed. And as we take heed with a listening ear, then God ends up giving us more. And that's how you see a lot of time people have when, when uh, they're, you know, they're in the word and they share things. It's, it seems to be just fantastic because they have taking heed to what God has given to them. And it's like line upon line. So uh, let us uh, just govern ourselves accordingly. So John 12, verse 23. And we can read this together too, uh, starting at 23 and ending at 26. 23 says, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. The last verse together. If a man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. honor. I might say honor. Honor. All right, I think we all want these wonderful things, honor and from God. In order to get the honor from God, we must honor him and serve him in the way that's acceptable. All right. Um, except now. Here he's, he's talking about the, uh, the cost of discipleship. Okay, let's just... 
look at it in this manner. He's talking about the cost of discipleship, the cost of following Jesus. And so Jesus said, if anyone is going to follow me, the first thing he should do is sit down and count what? The cost. Count the cost. Uh, it's, there's a cost involved. And that cost is denying self. Yeah. And it is a way of suffering, believe it or not. And, and, and I was thinking about the words that Jesus said. And, and one is going to read some of those others here that's found in some of the epistles. But uh, he says things like, strive to enter the straight gate. For broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads to death or destruction. So one of the things that is very true is that we don't want to do everything that everybody is doing. Even if it's popular. Are you hearing me? And so if you're a person that you like to be trendy and popular, that may not necessarily be the right thing to do. Amen. Uh-oh. Amen. Jesus says, strive to enter the straight gate. Then after he said what leads to destruction, then he says, for straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Once you get a picture as we're talking, narrow is the way, the road that leads to life. See, I don't think we really, really pay enough attention to the word of God. The way to life. The way to life continually coming from God and not only that, but when we get before the Lord, we don't have to stand before the Lord and say, well, Lord, I did all these good works for you. And the Lord said, well, I, you, we, didn't real, we didn't really have an intimate relationship. I really never knew you. You never really knew me. You never really knew what I love and what I like. One, one man said, and I won't call his name because I'm on the air, but... One man said, Lord, I want to hang out with you today. This is what he, he said. He was a preacher, and the Lord said, um, I don't like to hang out with you because you don't like to do what I like to do. You don't like to go where I like to go. Basically, you want to go to the golf club. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but Jesus want to go where the hurting and the broken hearted. Outcast. So you sure you want to go with me? I dwell in the high and holy place, but I dwell also with them that is broken and of a contrite heart. I love meeting the needs of broken hearted people. I love to heal the oppressed and deliver. So this man was, he felt spiritual. He said, I, I, I want to hang out with you today. But the Lord let him know, you're not there. You don't love what I love. But thank God there's some people here that love what he loves, right? Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, but think about denial. And uh, I don't know if you're ready yet to read those scriptures. But I, and give him a minute to. But I thought about what he says. If any man will come after me, let him do what first? Deny himself. Deny himself. Now, self-denial is not easy. But self-denial is very imperative to pleasing God. Amen. I know and you know that we cannot please God if we don't learn to deny ourselves. Now we're talking about or talking to the subjects of God's kingdom. We've been talking about the kingdom, right? Yes. The kingdom of God. Now we're talking about the people of the kingdom or the subjects of God's kingdom. What is required of them. And so he says if any man will be my disciple any man will come after me let him first deny himself what is what is so what is so painful is that we're in the body of Christ and I'm speaking to the Hampton Roads Tidewater area the outskirts of Carolina because of where the broadcast is going but the Lord this is the word the Lord was given to us today if any man desires to follow him and be a true disciple of him, they've got to first learn to deny themselves. The 
Y'all read the same Bible I read? So he says, he that really has an ear to hear, and we all have an ear to hear if we've been born again, right? Then he said, let him hear. So what do you mean deny yourself? Now there's a lot of things that we can do to deny ourselves according to what God wills. And guess what was one of the first things the Holy Spirit spoke to me? He says, winning souls. The reason we're not winning the souls is we're not denying ourselves. We're not denying ourselves. We're not denying ourselves. We want to live comfortable. We do not want to experience the possibility of somebody rejecting us. Am I right? So the first thing he brought to me was winning souls requires denying yourself. What I don't want to do is play religion and spend my whole life thinking that I'm pleasing God and I'm not. Hello. Amen. I know I'm speaking the truth today and it's tough but it's right. Amen. God said rebuild the church. It's, he wants us to learn what is pleasing in the sight of God. We're not living for one another. We're living to please God. Amen. I'm, I'm reminded of what God spoke to me when I was down in Carolina. And God said, my people, they don't have peace. He said, my people don't have joy. And he said, my people are not satisfied. So I said, well, Lord, why people don't, why your people, why we don't have peace? And he said, because there's turmoil in the soul. There's uncertainties, there's fears. And then, I said, well, Lord, why don't we have joy? He said, because we're not abiding in him. If you abide in him and his words abide in you, then you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Isn't that right? I know this is tight, but it doesn't bother me because I'm speaking the truth. And when God is dealing with foundational stuff and our minds are set in another direction, it resists God. And God was dealing with me about how his people have mindsets. Minds are set to do certain things. And God said he wants to uproot mindsets. Mindsets. What are some mindsets? Mindsets is I'm going to do things my way. Or mindsets can be uh, I don't have to put up with this. Or whether it's in the home or whatever. Mindsets is that I'm going to get uh, uh, all the blessings or riches in this life. Or I'm going to. All these mindsets has to do with ambition and desire and pleasures and, 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 and they, have its, they have their place, but uh -huh. they have their basis. They have their basis and, but exactly, it's rooted in selfishness. Somebody say selfishness. Selfishness. So God wants us to understand that we have been given the spirit of God, which is unselfish. Hello? unselfish that's the spirit that we are of an unselfish spirit so
So God has to uproot now minds that are set or attitudes that are fixed and they interfere with what God really wants done. Now when I said so when it got so quiet you'd think that I'd said something wrong. That shouldn't be the way. We're children of God. Yes. Isn't that right? Amen. If we're children of God, he that win its souls is wise. Isn't that right? Yes. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, right? Yes. I mean, this is what our Bible teaches, right? Amen. So what I'm trying to show you is that how where we are at this point in what God says, I want to uproot mindsets. Because a mind that's set is going to achieve, let me, let me see how that thing, he, he put it here. Mindsets affect our life expectancies and what we believe affects what we achieve, okay? That's right. Attitudes and perspectives are part conscious and part unconscious and can be learned, unlearned, programmed, and reprogrammed in a variety of different ways. Ways. If any man will come after me, let him do first what? Deny himself. Now I want you to pause with me and think for a moment. Are we denying ourselves? Are we just living and existing? Or are we denying ourselves? So the Lord said, people are, he said, the, uh, people are not satisfied. I said, well, God, why aren't we satisfied? God said, because... People are not doing my will. So my heavy concern is to communicate what the Lord is saying to me, for me, and you. If any man will come after me, let him first deny himself. Let him take up his cross and follow me. And I want you to read some, one well, if you will, in any comments you want to make. Because uh, I, I asked her to share because, share with me, and uh, I believe that that was helpful for us. Praise the Lord. Um, Self-denial, we know, is not easy, but as was stated earlier, it's, it's necessary. It's necessary for growth and development in the kingdom of God. And we're not talking about the world. We're talking about being subjects of God's kingdom and um, having his righteousness. So our standard in the kingdom is different from the standard that's in the world. And, uh, and so there has to be a distinction. And so this is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, uh, 10, verse 34. Do not suppose I have come to bring peace to the earth. This is Jesus talking. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies would be the members of his own household. For this reason, anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives the one who sent me, the Father God. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth. He will certainly not lose his reward. 
In other words, we can't have idols in our lives. We can't have things in our life that we love more than God. The words say, love God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy might, and have no other gods before him. Mm -hmm. You know, when we come to Christ, we made a commitment to live for him. We asked him to come into our life and live his life through us. So in order to follow him, we're going to have to deny, we must deny that fleshly old life, old man, as uh, some say. We have to deny him, not every now and then, but every day, daily, daily all day long. We must deny our flesh. We must deny our flesh and do what the Word of God tells us to do. That is not easy, but it's something that we can do because he said so. Mm -hmm. He will not require something of us and ask us to do something that we couldn't do. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what's important. Now that we are born again and now that we're in his kingdom and we're subjects of his kingdom, we can do what he said. Yes. The sinful nature, the old man, the power of the old man has been broken. So it's easy now for us to take up our cross and follow him. Mm -hmm. It's easy, easier mm -hmm. with him than without him. Yes. Amen. When you yield to him, yes. life gets easier. Yes. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So we don't have excuses and say, well, Lord, that's too hard for me. No. You practice de uh, denying yourself every day. Yes, yes. And I'm going to tell you in a practical way how we do that. If you're in a relationship and uh, your other half or your better half asks you to do something, your first response, if it's in the flesh, is to not want to do it or have an attitude about doing it. But if you yield it to the spirit, your nature would be, I'm going to deny myself how I feel about this and I'm going to go ahead and please this person. That's practical discipline. 